Welcome to How I Got My Start in Finance. In this episode, famed investor Danny Moses tells Larry McDonald how he made his break and joined the team that made one of the biggest calls in financial history. Moses' experience even played out on the big screen in the movie The Big Short. So my dad was a finance professor, so I kind of grew up all around investments and finance. I probably didn't understand a lot of it at the beginning, but from the age of eight or nine, I was looking through the business section, uh, looking at the two stocks that my father owned, and he used to tell me if a stock got to a certain level, we could get a dog. <laughs> so I keep tracking the stock Oxford Industries and it went from nine to 10 over a period of a year. So I told him, hey dad, the stock's at 10, he goes 20. And so I always had an interest, I was always tracking, and then I found out what these companies did and it was very you know, exciting and I knew what he did. So he was much more in the box in terms of investment analysis, but being able to track that over time was really interesting. From there, I um, thought I was gonna be a sports broadcaster. Uh, when I was at Emory University, I actually interned at CNN. And so I thought my calling was sports broadcasting, although maybe I've morphed into something by sitting here, you know, studio with you. But um, my friends all moved to New York from Emory. And instead of going somewhere in the Midwest to cover high school football to get my start, I decided I would try that. So I became a municipal bond analyst at MBIA, ironically, since they ended up blowing up, which had nothing to do with what I was doing at the time, covering airports, college, university bonds, and so forth. And so, so I got my so you're a break on the credit side. Exactly. Yeah, saw credits. the credit and actually saw the Orange County crisis in 1994, I believe, sitting from MBIA. So we used to have these meetings in the auditorium. That was probably my first brush with what could go wrong when you lend money to something. And obviously, as you well know, in Orange County, it turns out that the controller of the county was doing some risky things with the money and it just wasn't all on level. Um, got, got my MBA back at Emory for a year and then came back to Oppenheimer uh, in 1996. And that's where I met Steve Eisman, Vincent, Daniel, and Meredith Whitney. And they, so, that, yeah, so that's the yeah. key group from the movie, from the book. Correct. Uh, Eisman, Porter Collins. Right. So not many people realize this. You were t all together Correct. on the street yep. uh, for years, but before you went to Front Point. Correct. Yeah. So what's really interesting about that is, so I'm a salesman, you know, coming up to New York. And I'd been in New York, but not really city guy. And you meet Steve Eisman and Vincent Daniel from Queens, right? Um, and they were covering subprime then. So the first iteration of the subprime blow up with 1998, 1989, 2000, the home equity lenders, the subprime auto lenders, Ugly Duckling, Ames Financial, all these names. And Steve got up on the podium one day. So you know how the analysts come out on the morning call and they, they give the reports. They said, the following 10 stocks are going to zero. And so there was an older gentleman that I worked with. I was kind of his assistant in the sales and I was covering some of his accounts. And I'm like, can I go out with this call? He goes, no one wants to hear that. No one wants to hear that. So I would have Steve and Vinny come over to the desk and explain to me, what do you mean? And that was the first time I realized from a bottom-up perspective, they were already looking at Moody's and S&P's credit pools. Not, that they sh not saying that Moody shouldn't have downgraded these things yet, but they were looking at the, the cash that was being trapped, the performance of the loans. And that was the first time that I really thought to myself, you really need to understand the balance sheet and fixed income. Yes, so, so for the viewer watching us right now, yeah. a lot of people come up through Wall Street or get into finance and they look at an equity. Sure. But in some cases, as Steve points out in the movie, yep. uh, the big short movie, uh, the equity might be just a sliver of the entire company or the capital structure. Get into how you look at credit and equity in terms of, does credit always lead equities typically? It depends how, how it's funded. If okay. it's depending on the financial markets to fund itself, then the answer is yes, because if something goes wrong in the underwriting process, if you're a subprime auto lender or a mortgage lender and you're lending poorly, it will catch up with you over time. There's only so long you can go on with that. So just to st take a step back and then I can jump forward to why that process repeats itself, and you've, you've done the same type of work before, is that people don't peel back the onion to look. They see an equity, they think it's an equity-like company. They don't realize where they're getting most of their income from, which is selling these loans in the secondary markets. That's how they're generating their earnings and the performance of those loans. So Steve taught me then, and Vinny taught me then, that's the stuff you need to be looking at. And that was a different way to look at stocks, per se. But certainly, this is more pertinent for the financial services sector than any other sector, I would say, in terms of some type of financial engineering to look at. So that was banked in my mind. And then fast forward, Steve left to go to the buy side to Chilton, I believe, like shortly after 2000. Vinny went to Keith Bruett, um, and I found myself at Freeman Billings, ironically. And Freeman Billings, FBR, was the company that actually created the subprime mortgage companies, the, the lending companies, New, New Century, accredited home lender, Saxon. So here I am with the knowledge that Steve and Vinny gave me five years before, watching Freeman Billings create 
these Trojan horses, so to speak. I'm not saying they did it intentionally, I'm saying they were vulnerable. So my immediate thought process, this can't last. So I would call my fixed income friends and I'm like, there's something wrong with these companies. There's something wrong with the model. So my antennas went up. Fast forward again, 2000, late 2005, I left Freeman Billings. Um, I could see the writing on the wall and I really wasn't into promoting or pushing any more of these stocks and joined what at the time was a client. So that's where Steve, Vinny and Porter Collins had come together at Front Point Partners. And so they needed a trader. I had never really been a trader, but I understood the portfolio and been around the street enough. So, so this is Front Point Partners. What it, year is this? 2006. They had started okay. in 2004, let's say, when they, when they assembled their team. They had lost their trader and they were, I, they were actually a client of mine. So in 2004 and five, while I was at Freeman Billings, we were talking about the subprime market okay. and we were, we were reminiscing about 1998 to 2000 again. So working with them, even when I was on the sell side before I joined them on the portfolio management side, the knowledge that they gave me was so sort of made me that much smarter. That was my true MBA was 1998 to 2000. And then I guess PhD, I guess Steve gave me in, uh, in 2006, seven and eight during that process. Starting as a municipal bond analyst, Danny Moses called the Orange County credit crisis from his desk in New York. He met Steve Eisman and ended up being on the team featured in books and film. For Real Vision, I'm Justine Underhill.